there's something in us potentially that's thinking, I'm not happy with the way life's going right now. And I don't know why. And it may very well be because you haven't explored how life could be the alternatives. Perhaps you don't want a nine to five, right? And to climb the corporate ladder. Yeah. Hey, what's up, I'm Adam. If you're new here and if you're returning, then you know, what's good? Let's talk navigating one's 20s. I'm 25, so I'm midway through my 20s. And I'm realizing this is a really interesting period in one's life where you still have a lot of youthful, adventurous, kind of explorative like energy. And yet you're acutely aware that you're setting the foundations for the rest of your life. And so I find that we're flip flopping between I've got this, like everything's going great. I know what I'm doing to what on earth is going on? Like what's happening here? Is this the path I'm supposed to be going down and so forth? And I think based on, you know, other people in their 20s I've spoken to, based on speaking to people who are older than me and getting their wisdom and their experience, this is a very normal thing. Like we was just teenagers a few years ago and so there is still a lot of learning to be done. So what I wanna share in this video are three things that I think really help balance that kind of, like I said, youthful, adventurous energy and the desire to set yourself up for the life that you wanna live and go down the path that is going to be most fruitful and fulfilling for you. So let's just get into it. So the first and perhaps the most important thing I think one can do in their 20s is explore a range of possibilities for how life can be lived. There are so many things influencing the way we view life, right? And how life should be lived, whether that be media, whether that be family, friends, people we come across in academia, in the workplace, and all these people have an idea about what life should look like. And they will share those views with you. And it may be to do with having a nine to five and being in corporate and climbing the ladder or traveling the world, right, full time or starting a business or prioritizing family and building a family and potentially being a stay at home mom, whatever it is. And so there are all of these particular ideas being fed to you, which is why it is so important to research and explore these different opportunities or these different ways life can be lived before coming to any hard conclusions about life. And this research phase has to be done with an open mind. And I'm not saying that you physically go out and pursue each of these things, but that you use the tools at our disposal, like YouTube, like people's vlogs, people who are honestly speaking about what their life is like, perhaps in corporate, being a lawyer, or, you know, being a stay at home mum, or, you know, how they pursued this route and it ended up with these outcomes. Does that look like how you want life to look like for you? This really is an exercise in killing one's ego because it involves coming into contact with information that may differ from your viewpoints and your view of the world, right? And it's really hard to break out of this actually because the echo chambers that we create knowingly or unknowingly, when we search for certain things, you know, engage with certain content, will reinforce the ideas we already have. So we don't even consider that life could be lived differently, right? And yet there's something in us potentially that's thinking, I'm not happy with the way life's going right now. And I don't know why. And it may very well be because you haven't explored how life could be the alternatives. Perhaps you don't want a nine to five, right? And to climb the corporate ladder. Perhaps you want to travel, or perhaps you don't want to create your own business. You want to focus you know, you know, quite deeply on building a family and being a stay at home mum and homeschooling your kids, right? There are so many different ways life can be lived. And if you don't allow yourself to hear the arguments or hear the evidence for those different ways life can be lived, then you can go down a path in your 20s and building into your 30s and 40s that really doesn't align with your innate desires potentially or the things that you see as fulfillment in life or fulfilling for life. And I think this links closely to being humble in your 20s because we have so much to learn and we don't know it all. One of the best things I ever did was start to engage with content online that was different or challenge the opinions that I already had about how I thought life was, uh, you know, how life should be lived and things like that. And I'm not going to necessarily list all the people that I looked at, the books that I read, because I don't think the point is for me to, again, impose my own ideas on you or on anyone. But I think that was a fundamental step in me accepting that wow, well actually life could look like this. And actually, you know what, that kind of aligns a lot more with some of the things I've been thinking about, but didn't have a model to fit it into. So yes, do allow yourself to be in contact with a range of information and a range of possibilities for how life can be lived. And use that information then to craft a path that works for you, not necessarily what you've been told by this person or that person or by media, that this is what you should want. 
work it out for yourself. So the second really helpful thing to do in your 20s when you are trying to balance everything and like I said that youthful energy and that groundingness, that desire to root yourself and set your foundations for your path is to systematically assess all of the components of your life. The thing about life is it's so multifaceted and there's so many layers to it and so many interactions going on that if you just try to look at it as one whole picture and break that down you struggle like you know when someone says how's life and you're like could you ask me a more specific question <laughs> and there's power in being able to objectively and logically bring things to their components so that you can see what's happening on that kind of that level and then you know see the interactions that are going on between them the reason why i'm such a big advocate of this is because we are prone to tunnel vision right like we get onto something and that becomes our sole focus whether it be you know career whether it be your health whether it be relationships whether it be a hobby that you have whatever it is and so you then start to find there are heavy imbalances in your life because you haven't considered the other components and i've spoken about different tools you can use like the wheel of life before or you can even think about just using post-it notes and like having you know the different components of life or major life categories if you'd like and then the good and the bad like what's going well and what needs to be improved on and when i talk about life categories i'm thinking about things like finances relationships you know mental and physical health hobbies and fun personal development i'll put a few of these around in the screen and so use that as a foundation to then set goals and plan for life with a level of balance in mind with a holistic view because i mean all of these things influence how we live life how we enjoy life um, and what we get out of it and so if you're trying to make a holistic plan for yourself or even enjoy the now like as a rounded person you have to consider multiple things or multiple facets of life my final tip for navigating your 20s is to take calculated risks now as we've already said your 20s is a time to learn and develop and so it's finding that balance between pushing the boundaries for you know what's possible and taking yourself to the next level and achieving things and trying things out that you know may you may never tried before but at the same time mitigating for the risk associated with certain things right so that balance like okay i could stay at home and never leave my house and mitigate for every single risk associated with traveling or i could sensibly weigh up the you know what i have to consider and put in place to travel safely and that kind of idea goes across life effectively whether it's to do with relationships finances education whatever it is and a prime example for my own life is i left my job of just over a year and without another one lined up and you know at first sight that sounds crazy like well, like the risk is high you could be unemployed for the rest of your life probably not but that was a calculated risk i knew that i needed to take some time to process things to kind of understand where i want to go in life and things like that and just have some time to breathe without a, a nine to five effectively but that was a very calculated step like i had saved before i got to that point i also knew the market that i was going to be going into i knew that i had a very in demand skill and i knew the market was in high de well, i was in high demand basically and then i wouldn't have a problem in three months time if i wanted to go for a job there still was an element of risk things could have gone wrong anything could have happened right we've seen what is possible in this world right now that anything can just happen and come from around the corner and hit you upside the head but yes all that is to say is think about what you want to do and if there is risk involved how you can mitigate against it sensibly without infringing too much and you may come to some conclusions that the risk is too high like it's too high for me now and for the Im potential impact in the future and decide i'm not going to do that and other things you'll be like actually there is this level of risk and i can mitigate for this how and some level of risk is acceptable and therefore i'm going to go forward under these circumstances so that's it if you are in your 20s hopefully this is helped you and uh, you know help with navigating this time this period and also that balance between all the energies that are within us and the desires that we have like like i said that desire to still be adventurous and explore and see what the world has to offer but you know being grounded in it and realizing that the decisions we make now will impact our future like whilst it's not the be all and end all and of course we have the years ahead of us at the same time, the decisions we make now will have an impact on our future. The level of impact may vary and be very small in some cases and minuscule, and in other cases it can be very large. So yes, that's it. I will see you in the next video.